It was a down day across the board on Wall Street today. The inflation report is overshadowing strong earnings. Today's closing numbers, the Dow dropped more than 107 points today to close at 34,888. The S&P fell more than 15 points to close at 43.69. And the Nasdaq also down more than 55 points to close at 14,677. Well, if you've been shopping for clothes, furniture, cars, pretty much anything recently, it's not your imagination. Prices way, way up. Numbers released today by the Labor Department show that consumer prices in June jumped 5.4% since last year. That is the sharpest hike in inflation since August of 2008. The Fed and the White House, well, they're getting out the message and saying that they think the current spike in inflation will be temporary. Yeah, let's hope so. Washington says as supply chain bottlenecks are resolved and the economy returns to normal, the price of clothing, hotel rooms, cars, other things will normalize. And J.P. Morgan's profit has more than doubled in the past year. The bank says customer spending is returning to pre-pandemic levels. They add the spending is evidence that a strong economic recovery is showing few signs of slowing. The nation's biggest bank posted a profit of $11.95 billion, or $3.78 a share. Compare that to last year, $4.69 billion a year ago when J.P. Morgan was trading at $1.38 per share. That would have been a good stock to buy. Well, hey, just as we're getting used to the idea of electric cars, United Airlines is investing in an electric airplane manufacturer. The Swedish startup is called Heart Aerospace. Now, United hasn't disclosed how much money they're putting into the electric plane company, but United says the 19 passenger electric planes may be able to fly relatively short distances by the end of the decade. That's cool. United has conditionally agreed to buy 100 units. Now, no word yet on how quiet the new electric planes will be. And we are right in the middle of hurricane season. So if you are like me and you love downloading apps, well, one called Waze could help save your life. The popular driving app can now display evacuation routes and show you how to find the nearest shelter. Well, we spoke with Dahlia Dombrowski of Waze from their headquarters in Tel Aviv. During hurricanes, our community helps support um, users in a lot of different ways, for example, by adding road closures to the map and by adding shelter pins um, for users to navigate to. And one of the most important means we have to support users during hurricanes is evacuation zones. So when evacuation orders, we have a feature informing users to not go into this area if their destination uh, is there or if they really have to do so to do it safely. But we have a lot of different data sources. It depends on, on what, we're, what we're trying to surface to you. And um, one of the primary sources for all our data is our Waze community. These are volunteer map editors who spend their time editing maps and they also often provide us with shelter pins. So they provide us with coordinates, with phone numbers, with names, and we upload them to the map uh, for them. They also add road closures. Um, but at the same time, we also work with partners. So these can be partners like um, DOTs or emergency services across the country that help us also provide authoritative data um, to make sure we upload the right thing. So it's a combination of partner and community provided data. Um, for the most part. So Hurricane Sandy was the first time we did it. Um, and since then, we've supported many, many natural disasters, also others than, other than hurricanes. Uh, we support wildfires. We support also um, human-made um, um, crises, such as uh, gas shortages. Waze operates globally. Um, we operate, I think, we have very active uh, maps in over 180 countries. I think the most surprising thing about Waze in general, and I think it's what most people don't know, is that there's such a passionate community of drivers behind it. Um, so you really, as a driver navigating with the app, you're helping other users on the road by reporting hazards on the road or reporting a weather hazard. Um, and really what I think a lot of people don't know, and I think it's so important, is that there is this huge community of volunteers behind it as well that dedicate so much of their free time to help others and make sure they get to their place they need to get to safely, whether it's during a crisis um, or just during their daily commute. Um, and they provide us with so much feedback and they let us know when there are features we need to build. And it's led to fantastic opportunities for us, such as bringing out a toll road feature, a toll pricing feature um, a few years back. And I think that's the most special thing about Waze. And it's always been, and I think it will always be. 
And if you are wondering, no, it's not easy to cheat the system by closing your street to traffic. There are different levels of contributors to Waze, and they'll know if someone has been cheating.